Welcome to Primitive Plus. Primitive Plus alters the available tools, weapons, and structures in the game to reflect what humans could realistically create using primitive resources and technology. Now, this doesn't remove advanced tech in ARC, but simply replaces it with many different resources, engrams, and systems. I will have to specialize in multiple roles and complete my goal of defeating the dragon. The dragon is the one who took away all of our tech. Bit rude, don't you think? Well, I want my super cool, awesome tech railgun back, and I think I may have to pry it out of the dragon's cold, dead fingers. Do dragons have fingers? Never mind. Join me on my adventure where I may craft 11 unique weapons, build an advanced farm system for 10 types of crops, 60 different recipes, discover over 40 new resources, and do this all with no mods. What? You heard me, and you're probably wondering, Rex right use no mods? Yes. I will be completely modless. Hold on to your dodo, cause this thing's about to get rowdy. On day one, I did the usual arc shenanigans. By that, I mean I picked up some stones, punched an already dead tree, and ripped bushes from their roots for fiber and berries. Then I made my very first pickaxe. I then killed a tree with that pickaxe, and then I went to kill a rock. Turns out, metal is now called iron, so that's cool, I guess. I, of course, became the human form of Raxurite as always. Hirochi also joined me. Later in the day, I was feeling cold. Probably. So I made a shirt and pants for myself. I also crafted a spear and a campfire and went hunting. I then went off to kill an innocent Lysosaurus. When it died, it gave me fresh meat. So I made a campfire and started cooking some of this fresh meat. While that was cooking, I made three more spears to attempt to kill a Dillo. Later in the day, I was getting sick and tired of being encumbered. So I made a storage box and it couldn't hold everything. So I made a second storage box and well, it almost held everything. Near nightfall, I made a thatch foundation and placed a mortar and pestle upon it. I then split a bunch of meat so on day two, I could begin to craft narcotics. On day two, eventually the meat spoiled, so I made 34 narcotics. I also made four more storage boxes. Then I made 22 pitchforks. Yup, you heard me right. No, it's not a troll order at McDonald's. I legitimately made 22 pitchforks. Why? Why? I don't know. I then proceeded to kill a Moshas with these exact pitchforks I just made. And well, they seemed pretty effective to me. After that, I started crafting some cementing paste. Then I made a full set of hide armor. Well, full besides the hat, cause I ran out of engram points like a loser. But that's okay, only losers wear hats, right? After that, I crafted a bow and 85 arrows. On day three, I was harvesting some rocks and noticed that I got claystone. Don't know what it do, but it's probably important. I can also make large storage boxes now, so I made five of them. And man, do they look different. There's like a shelf and there's like a sandbag at the bottom and like a, a cup in the middle and like something on top. It's kind of interesting looking. Unfortunately, when you fill it up, it does not like look like stuff is filling it up. It's kind of a missed opportunity to be honest, but it's whatever. Later in the day, I came across a dodo. So I knocked it out and tamed it. I named him Killer cause obviously he's gonna be killing everything. Honestly, I should just breed an army right now out of this dodo. I spent the rest of the day harvesting bushes for narco berries. My current plan is to get to level 21 to get trank arrows if they're still even at that level and then knock out a trike and of course tame it. By the time the morning of day 4 rolled around, I was level 22, and yes, Trank Arrows are still at level 21. So, I made 70 Trank Arrows and another bow. And then another 100 arrows for good measures, of course. Then, I used those 70 Trank Arrows, and by used, I mean it took like 8 Oi. to knock out and tame a level 12 trike. Such a magnificent level, I know. When she tamed up, I named her Princess. I bet you thought I was gonna make some sort of reference to Land Before Time, cause I feel like I do that all the time, but no. I felt like naming her Princess cause I didn't want to name her Sarah cause Sarah's overused. Cry about it. I harvested two bushes with Princess, became encumbered, and then regretted my life decisions. I will give credit where credit is due however. She does pretty well at harvesting berries and in this case narco berries. Later in the day I found this icky thornus bird walking, so I killed it. I absolutely showed it no mercy whatsoever. Then I came across Whoa. a level 92 dodo, so I knocked her out and named her Queen Flutterbutt. 
And this queen needs a king, and Killer ain't no king, let me tell you that. Even though I talked about him like killing everything and ruling the world maybe. But no, nah, not a king. Mm -mm. So on day five, I went out to look for a king, Dodo. And I eventually found one. After taking care of a few Dodos that weren't worthy, I might say. After that, I made a refining forge so I can start smelting metal. While it started to smelt some metal, I went out to get more iron. And to finish off day five, I made a smithy. On day six, I made a metal pickaxe and hatchet. Then I made a crossbow so I can have a better time knocking stuff out. After that, I proceeded to make another hundred something arrows and like another hundred something trank arrows. Then I came across a goose, so I killed it and harvested its organic polymer. I also made five bolas in case of emergency, of course. Then I went out on a mission to find a raptor to tame. And I found a level 36 raptor, so it's uh, not really good. Come here, raptor. Nice raptor. How it is your level? 36. Oh, that is dookie. So I killed it. At dookie level. So on day 7, the search continued. I found a raptor, but it was already dead. However, I did find a level 90 Moz Chops that wanted Medjo Berries, so I tamed him and named him Moss. Then I killed a Parasaur with Moss. Granted, it took a while, but I still managed to kill it. Hey, hey you come back here. Thank you, sir. Then I got attacked by a swarm of dragonflies. Nothing Moss can't handle, though. I killed a trike that seemingly appeared out of nowhere. It dropped fresh spare ribs, which, like, I guess they were some sort of prime meat alternative, maybe? I don't know. Seemed kind of cool, though. On the way home, I came across a Pego Mastax. And I actually like Pegos, so I tamed it and named her Essay. Later in the day, I killed a Pteranodon. Yeah, you tried, bro. I became encumbered because as I killed it, I also harvested like 600 bushes, and out of nowhere, a Pego comes up, and somehow I tamed it. I don't even know how I tamed it, because I, I didn't have Medro Bears in my hopper, I don't think. I already have SA, so I guess I just kind of left it there. We'll see if it's still there by day 100 or something. Spoilers, it, it doesn't, it, it dies. When I got back to base, there were Dillos attacking it. Princess was getting comboed, but did eventually win the fight. On day 8, I made a raft so I can start sailing to hopefully find myself a home. After eventually moving everything I needed to the raft while leaving the stuff I didn't need behind, I went off into the sunset. And by into the sunset, I mean the very calm looking sea to hopefully one day find a place to build. I even made an encounter with your mom, I mean this whale. Hey yo, what the f Sometime on day 9, I lost Moss. Here's what happened. Don't flee this bro! Fight back! No, he's getting dragged underwater. He's getting he's getting murked. No, buddy, get up here. No, no, no! It should have been me. Should have been me. After that, I came across land that I wanted to live on. I like this spot right up here. It's flat ish just like your girlfriend's chest so i made a lumber station and started making some lumber at the end of the day it started getting real foggy and real dark out and it was pure nightmare fuel to make things worse a carno came out of nowhere and started to chase me oh no i didn't even place my hammock down you meanie i don't even know where i'm going bro this ain't fair luckily i managed to evade it by getting on my raft but man was that close too close some would say. The one problem where I chose to live is that there's no real source of stone nearby. On day 10, after the storm faded away, I went out to continue looking for stone. I went into the forest because I saw a raptor, and after I bullied it, I found out it's a crappy level, so I killed it. Sorry, bruh. While being extremely encumbered, I walked out of the forest and saw another raptor. This one happened to be level 6. Gross. Later in the day, I was trying to figure out how the hammock works and, well, it's broken. So I gave up and just left it to hang in midair. After that, the Carno came back, so I tried to lead it to the level 168 trike and failed. Oh! No! SA, run away! No, don't fight it! It ended up killing me and SA, so when I respawned, I went back and saw the trike and Carno fighting. I grabbed my stuff and watched the trike die. So now we have a probably high level Carno roaming around and one day I will hopefully tame it. And well, it came after me again. So this time I tried to get the Paracer to defend me, but I failed and the Carno killed me again. Fight him, bro. Why me? Get him, get him, bro. Ugh. That's not fair. 
I respawn, but this time not at the hammock since it's on cooldown. So I respawned in East Zone 3 and was chased and killed by about 17 Sarkos. So I respawned again, evaded some more Sarkos, and eventually got to my house. Then I got jumped by a Dillo and Snake. So I respawned at my hammock this time and then proceeded to try and get my stuff back. But then the Carno noticed me, so I ran to a Sarko. And, um, I, I died again. Who would have thought? When I respawned this time, I managed to spawn close to my base, so I went to grab my stuff and then I killed the snake. There also happened to be an unconscious Dillo. I think the snake knocked it out or something. So I tamed it and named him Dill Pickle. On day 11, I took the raft to the southern part of the island to find some crystals so I can make a spyglass. I looked away from the screen for like 3 seconds and came back to myself, well dead. The stupid ants got to me, of course. So I spawned in East Zone 1, but was basically in East Zone 2 or 3. Absolutely ridiculous. And after like 10 painful deaths later, I finally made it back to my first corpse. And yes, I killed the stupid ants. On day 12, I made two sleeping bags since I apparently cannot craft a simple bed that I don't have the engram for, even though I do. It's probably a glitch and it's stupid, but I placed the two sleeping bags on my raft and we're good for now. After that, I ventured into the lava cave to get some crystal. The whole reason I even came down here was for this stuff, not to get killed by ants or whatever, so... That was a huge waste of time. And with that being said and done, I went back home. When I got back home, I made a spyglass. Then I started to kill a Sarko when out of nowhere, our nemesis Carno started to attack me. Help me! No! I eventually died and respawned, of course. When I respawned, I tried to get my stuff, and then a Dillo started to attack me. So I went to get Dill Pickle and then noticed that the Carno was coming after me again, for seemingly no reason as always. Luckily, I got the attention of the Carno off me and on my house instead. I was about to use Dill Pickle as a sacrifice, but the Carno lost interest in my house, so Dill Pickle is safe for now. And as I am reading this right now, I am so grateful that Dill Pickle did not die and I did not use him as a sacrifice. You will understand this soon. Then I managed to get my stuff and of course I went back to killing the Sarko. Later, I found another Sarko and this time it was level 66, so I killed it as well. And this time, I luckily wasn't interrupted by anything. Okay, so the rest of day 12, all of day 13, all of day 14, and most of day 15 was the most chaotic time I've ever had in Ark. That's not good. Oh, that's not good! No! You've gotta be kidding me, man! I'm about to slam my wiener in a microwave, do I? I sure did bond with my boy Dill Pickle, though. Get him! I can't do it! Dill Pickle, I need your assistance, amigo! Get him, Dill Pickle. Yes, Dill Pickle. Get him! Yes, Dill Pickle. Yes! You legend, you. Yes, Dill Pickle. Yes, you mighty, mighty legend, you. Get them. Get them, bro. Yes. Let's go. We're making a comeback. Where's my... Get him. Yes. Hurry up. Yes, get these guys. There we go. Took a while. Get him, Dill Pickle. You got this, bro. Yes, buddy. You a legend right here. This guy, he a legend. He didn't even take no damage. He is a savage. Get him, Dill Pickle. Or they're gonna hit the pig. I don't know what you guys want with the pig. Get him, Dill Pickle. That's what's up. Oh, yeah. Teamwork of the century. Unstoppable force. You and I, we're going places. On day 16, I still wanted to tame a Sarko, but since I've had such bad luck on this side of the swamp, I decided to go to the other side. So I put Dill Pickle on the raft and traveled over there. I want to tame a Sarko, but at this point, I'd almost accept any high level I find. I just know that a Sarko may be my best chance at taking care of the pesky Carno near my base. Or maybe that level 162 Carno, cause she's over here somewhere as well. When I got there, I crafted two sleeping bags and as I did that, a snake started to attack the raft. Bro, not again. So I whistled Dill Pickle onto the snake and I got knocked unconscious. Luckily, Dill Pickle managed to kill the snake and I woke up. And as I woke up, another snake came to attack. So I fell asleep again. 
When I woke up, I went to kill a level 6 Karna with Dill Pickle. Since Dill Pickle has been so good to me, I decided to give him a wife. So I tamed a female Dilophosaurus. When she tamed up, Dill Pickle came to meet her. You may now kiss the bride. And then they became husband or wife or something like that. Near the end of the night, I was looking to see where that level 162 Karna went. And well, I found it. Ugh. Ah! That's not fair! On day 17, I went back and led the Karno away and then grabbed my stuff. Then I bullied a pack of three raptors and knocked out the level 162 that was leading the pack. It started to run away and then it killed a turtle and then it went back to trying to kill me. However, I managed to make it torpor run again just before it could end me. After she was knocked out, the Karno came back, so this time I managed to break its ankles going up the cliff. If it were any smarter, it could have gotten me, but it's not. When the raptor tamed up, I gave her a saddle and named her Delta. So with all of that being over with, it's time to tame me a Carno. So I took my tools and went to the side of the cliff and worked on knocking this beast out. Near sunset, I finally managed to knock her out. When she fell asleep, I went back to my raft to see if I had any prime meat. And well, there was something attacking my raft. Of course, right? So there's this Therizinosaurus attacking my raft. I whistled everything to attack it, and I kind of regretted that, I probably should have whistled passively. Anyways, the big chicken killed me, so I respawned and I found out that all my tames were killed. Things really just can't go my way, can they? Well, on the bright side of things here, I've still got a Carno to tame, so I traveled towards the Carno. On my way there, I met a pack of Truidons. Well, one at first. After I killed the first one, I was greeted by a second one. I killed the second one as I passed out, so that's good, I guess. Now to tame up that Carno. When I got to the Carno, I heard something being attacked. At first, I panicked and thought something was attacking my Carno. Then I found out it was a Parasaur getting its ankles bitten by a Dillo. So I killed the Dillo since I saw it as a threat. On day 18, the Carno tamed up and I named her Hannah. I led her to the raft and then began harvesting river stones for metal. Eventually, I had enough metal for a saddle, so I made one and gave it to Hannah. So with the saddle on Hannah, I went to seek revenge on a particular bird that devastated my last three friends and my most beloved Dilophosaurus, Dill Pickle. <laughs> Dill Pickle, no! It was an easy battle. Stupid oversized chicken never even saw it coming. At the end of the day, I put Hannah on the raft and went home. When I got back on day 19, I wasted no time killing the annoying Carno that has caused me so much pain. So now that I have proper protection, I went back to building my base. Except I actually thought it was too small, so I tore down the walls and planned on making the foundation bigger. Speaking of protection, I had an incident where Hannah had to protect me. Hannah! Yay. And from this point forward, I'm not leaving the base without her. At all point in time, she's just gonna be following me around for protection. With that being said, time to build myself a house. On the morning of day 23, I took a break from building the house to make a smokehouse to preserve my food. And by food, I mainly mean my cooked meat, but I'm sure it'll come in handy for the future. Then I went back to building the house. On day 25, I finished the house, and I'd say it looks pretty good. After that, I went on an adventure to find a beehive, and it actually didn't take as long as I'd originally thought. So I tried to find a way to get closer and ended up falling off the cliff to my death. When I respawned, I came back with some structures to help me out, and well, it didn't give me any beeswax. So I found another beehive, and this time the bees actually fought back. I killed all the bees and found 100 beeswax in Hannah's inventory. I guess maybe the beehive had to have bees in it or something, I don't know. At the end of the day, I started to cook some bacon. On day 26, I started to tame a paracer. Only halfway in did I notice that I was using stone arrows. Oh my god, these are stone arrows. Oh, the stupid thing switched them. This was because the stupid game swapped both of my crossbows after I died yesterday and I didn't realize until it was too late. So I put the Paracer out of its misery. I realized that Dodos may produce feathers, like maybe you'd have to pluck them from their tamed corpse or uh, tamed body or something like that. So instead of going all the way back to pick up King and Queen Flutterbutt, I just went out to tame some new Dodos. So on the morning of day 27, I found seven Dodos. Yes, you heard me right. Seven 
seven dodos. So of course I tamed all seven. I went to see if I could pluck feathers from a dodo, but you can't. So I guess now I have an army of dodos. When I got home, I made a small pen for them and just let them breed. Google said that I need a machete to harvest their feathers when I die, so now I'll just have a dodo farm. After I finished the pen and put all the dodos on wandering, I made a machete. Then I took one of the dodos out from the pen and sacrificed it to my crossbow. Turns out one dodo can actually get you a lot of feathers, so that's pretty nice. I wanted to see what feathered arrows were like, so on day 28, I crafted 66 feathered arrows. And well, I didn't really see the point of them. They do less damage, and I can't really see a valid use for them. So for now, I think I'll be sticking to normal arrows. I was thinking that maybe they would have better velocity or were able to go farther, but I don't know. Maybe they'll be better in a recurve bow. After that, I went back to find some more metal. On day 29, I made a musket, and it's actually really good. Ooh, my... Unfortunately, there aren't any darts, so I'll have to keep a bow for knocking stuff out. And since tanning racks take forever to make leather, I made two more to speed up the process. Then I went to go find an Argentavis to tame. I didn't find one, but later I found out that it was too cold for my pathetic character to handle, so he died. And by he died, I mean I died, you, you, you get it. So on day 30, when it was hopefully warmer out, I went back to go find my pathetic loser's corpse bag. Of course, when I got there, it was still freezing cold midday. Not only was I dying of cold, but I was also being chased by a carno. I found Hannah and whistled her to follow me, but it was too late. So when I respawned, I went again. This time I crafted three pieces of kite and armor. Not like it's gonna do much though. Because like the, the parts I crafted were like the three least warm looking pants. I didn't craft a chest plate or pants. So it's like I'm wearing boots, gloves, and a hat and underwear. So I don't know how much that's gonna do. Anyways, while I traveled back, I found a stego that honestly looked like it was dead. It was like, it didn't have an animation for moving. It was uh, kind of creepy. Eventually, I got back to Hannah and got all of my stuff back. So, turns out that Stego wasn't the only one. I think all Stegos are actually broken like this, so that's weird. But I guess I learned my lesson from this adventure is that I should probably start pumping Fortitude. And well, I didn't tame an Argentavis today, but maybe tomorrow. On day 31, I came across a blue drop. And just look at the trash inside and tell me you call that loot. I dare you. Anyways, I spent the rest of the day killing low-level Argies. I wasn't having any luck finding any birds, so on day 32, I swam over to Carno Island in hopes of finding a high-level bird. When I arrived on the island, I opened a purple drop and was greeted by absolute trash. I saw a level 6 Argentavis flying through the sky, so I shot it down. Later in the day, I saw an Argentavis doing some sick dance moves. And at the end of the day, I opened another blue drop and was awarded with more trash. Who would have thought? On day 33, I continued my search for a good level Argentavis to tame. Later, I opened a yellow loot drop and actually got not trash this time. Nice. And by the time sunset rolled around, I had still not found a bird to tame. I did, however, get in quite the pickle near the end of the day. I saw a level 162 male carnal, and I tried to kill the stuff around it. But it just turned into a blood fest because I ran out of stamina and ended up having to kill everything. Really unfortunate though, he looked cool. On day 34, I of course continued the search for a bird to tame. Halfway through day 34, I started to knock out a level 162 Argentavis. By the time it started torpor running, or flying I guess, the idiot flew to the ocean. I guess while that idiot's deciding on whether or not he wants to drown himself, I suppose I'll try to find another one to knock out. On day 35, I found myself back at the RG I was trying to knock out yesterday. You know, the idiot one. I tried swimming after him and eventually gave up because a level 180 megalodon started biting Hannah's ankles. So I started to knock him out. I eventually got swarmed by mantas and had to retreat back to the land. When I got there, I noticed that the idiot bird had landed, so I continued to knock him out. I eventually knocked it out and almost immediately had a saber tooth try to mess up my tank. Me and Hannah didn't let that happen. So then I killed a carnal for prime meat and just guarded the RG as he tamed up. And by the end of the day, he had finally tamed up, so I gave him a saddle and named him Nun Nuts with a Z for uh, fashion. I don't know. We got flight, boys. On the morning of day 36, I went to go find that Megalodon I started to tame. When I found it, I continued to shoot tranquilos at it. 
Eventually it fell asleep and when it did, I didn't realize and accidentally shot another arrow at it. Anyways, I just waited for him to tame up. When he tamed up, I named him Torpedo. For whatever reason, he doesn't want to follow Numbnut, so I had to swim and make both the bird and the fish follow me. And I eventually started to die of freezing because the water's cold. So I flew back to land and quickly made a campfire. Then a rude bird decided to destroy it, but that's fine because I'm no longer freezing. On the morning of day 37, I went back out to get Torpedo. Then I crafted enough cementing paste to make him a saddle, because I planned on riding him home as I thought it'd be the easiest option. And actually, you know what? I think a raft would be the best option. It was quite the long trip home, but eventually we made it. The only way to park your Megalodon. On day 38, I crafted a recurve bow. Then I made a magnifying glass to see which does more torpor, a recurve bow or a crossbow. The recurve bow does 179 torpor and the crossbow does 157 torpor. So the recurve bow wins. Not by a whole lot, but better is better. Then I went out to find a high level Anki and Dodic to tame. So I'm gonna start with the Anki. I found a level 162 Anki, so I picked it up and flew it back home. On the morning of day 39, I started to knock out the Anki and then I waited for her to tame up. When she tamed up, I named her Spike. Then I gave her a saddle and went to the mountain for some metal. I returned to my house on day 40 and started to smelt the metal I just harvested. Then I gathered some narco berries with Spike so I can replenish my Trank Arrow supply. I spent all of day 41 looking for a Dodic, but unfortunately, I never found one. So on day 42, I continued my search. And if you thought I was going to find one today, you're wrong, because I didn't. I'm sure you already know what occurred on day 43, but actually, let me throw in a curveball you won't expect. Okay, maybe you will. I died. You see, a Thyla came out of nowhere, and of course, I couldn't shoot the creature right in front of me. Not only did the game not let me shoot the giant squirrel, but Numbnuts also did basically nothing to help. That's nice. So, I respawned, but before I left, I made myself a full set of iron armor. Yeah, it's, it's called iron armor, not flag, so, uh, you know deal with it. By the time I got back to my corpse, it was day 44, and the search for a Dodic was still on. While still on the lookout for a Dodic, I found an Alpha Carno, so I killed it and I got better pants and a better pickaxe. Quite nice. But I realized something, the search actually couldn't go on, because I had to run back home and drop off Hannah. On the way back, I fought an Alpha Raptor and got an even better pickaxe. Not by a whole lot, but better is better. By the time I made it home, it was day 45. This whole thing really shouldn't have taken this long to find a stupid dodic, but it has. So of course, let this search continue. At the end of the day, I finally found a level 162 dodic. So I scooped him up and flew home. He actually went into his shell before he knocked out and luckily he had enough torpor rising to knock him out. Let's go. Well, I had hit record for these days, but of course I didn't realize that the drive my recordings get saved to was about to run out of space. So with that being said, days 46 through 50's file got corrupted, so there's no video. But I will summarize what went on. I tamed up that Dodic and named him Boulder. I made four campfires to make charcoal. I made gates and bear traps to trap bigger dinos to tame. I spent a few days looking for a Therry to tame while also killing a few alphas resulting in good loot. Eventually, I found a high level Therizino to tame, so I did and named him Dark Feather with a U instead of an E because it looks cooler. I don't know. Okay, cool. Now you're all caught up. Now back to your regularly scheduled programming. On the morning of day 51, a rude snake decided to snack on all of my dodos. However, I wasn't recording. I was just testing stuff, but luckily I have G-Force experience. Bruh. Go save him, Boulder. Then, I worked on crafting 10 dino gates. Next thing I want to tame is two rexes so I can start breeding. By the morning of day 52, I had finally crafted all 10 dino gates and gateways. Then I kind of realized that I didn't actually really need the gates, I just needed the gateways because a rex can't go through the gateways like a Therizinosaurus can, but it's whatever, it doesn't really matter. Then I started my search for a high level rex by going to Carno Island. By the morning of day 53, I had managed to knock out a level 168 male Rex. It didn't take as long as I had originally thought to find, so that's good. I checked his stats through Dodo decks and they're uh, not that great. None of his stats are considered low, but none of them are high either. No high health, no high melee. 
but no low health and no low melee, so that's kind of where we are. I may have just wasted my time, but eh, we'll find out. Anyways, when he tamed up, I flew back down, and man, was there a bloodbath afterwards. Two Rexes had started to attack my newly tamed Rex, and the Rex couldn't fight back because of the gates. And an Argentavis was attacking me. It, it was crazy. Just watch what happened. Jeez, man, I just tamed you and you're nearly dead already. Before I had him follow me home, I healed him up. By the morning of day 54, I had finally made it home with the Rex. Now to go search for a female or better male. But before I do that, I need to make some more Trank Arrows. And in order to make more Trank Arrows, I need more Narcotics. So I used Dark Feather to get more Narco Berries. While the Narcotics were being crafted, I made a Rex Saddle for the Rex I haven't named. Speaking of which, I'll name him Big Tooth. He also had 12 levels, so I put them all into melee. By the morning of day 55, I had replenished my Tranquero supply. If I find a high level male Rex, one higher than Big Tooth, I'll tame it. Hopefully it's better than Big Tooth, but we'll cross that bridge if we get there. If I don't find a high level male and instead find a high level female, I'll tame it and just hope its melee and health are better than Big Tooth's, especially its melee. Well, with that being said, I spent all of day 55 and by the end of day 55, I had not found a Rex. What? No. Oh. He just got thrown. <laughs> Near the end of day 59, I came across a level 180 female Rex. So I'm going to tame it and just breed from there. It was quite the adventure to get it in the trap. No, are you... Bruh. Why are you going down? Come get me, Big Bertha. Come on, you gotta come over here. Or just climb over there. That works too. Brochacho. Amigo. Milady. Follow me. Ow, ow. See, I'm letting you bite my bird. You should follow me now. There you go. Once I managed to lead her to the trap and, well, trap her, I started to knock her out. I soon realized that her health is absolute garbage, but I think her melee might be decent. So when she knocked out, I flew home. On day 60, I arrived home, so I crafted a wreck saddle and rode Big Tooth to his soon-to-be wife or girlfriend or sister. I don't know. Probably not sister. That got weird. When I got there, I fed her prime meat and named her Big Bertha. Live Me explains the situation pretty well. Live Me, what's it looking like? Still got dookie health? Yeah, Big Tooth had way better health than you, but you have much better melee, so that's, that's good. That's what we're looking for. All right, back to you, voiceover me. Thanks, Live Me. With that being said, I guess I'm going to have to walk these giant lizards back home now. On day 61, I arrived home with my two large lizards. Now all I have to do is start breeding. I'm not excited for this since I am modless, I'll have to do everything manually and that's fine, it's just, it's gonna be much more time consuming. So I started breeding the Rexes, set up a campfire section because there are no generators and no air conditioners in Primitive Plus and just began hatching eggs. It took a long time and that's an understatement. The real problem is that I was having a lot of trouble getting perfect male or females. Since this is taking so long, my plan is to just get an army of Rexes. Chances are they're not going to be mutated. But it's already been 10 days, so let's see how live Rex Rite is doing. It's day 70. I'm trying just to get a perfect male and female so I can just get an army from that. I'm not even trying to get mutations. This is going to take forever. Stick with me, because it's going to be worth it. I promise. Probably. I'm struggling real bad with this. This is so boring and like this is horrible. So just do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and like button and uh, that'll help me out a lot and uh, that'll give me the motivation to continue doing this. Anyways, thanks for subscribing and liking. Let's get back to the montage. On day 71, I got a level 285 female Rex. Now, technically, it's not a perfect Rex, but if I get a level 285 male, they should have the same stats and then I can breed from there. This is just taking way too long. So now all I have to do is get a level 285 male. Then I'll take them to the obelisk and do the breeding and growing there so I don't have to take 20 trips back and forth. So, continue the montage. On the morning of day 72, while I was looking for the level 285 male, I actually found a perfect female. At level 293, this female was perfect. So I claimed it. Now instead of needing a level 285 male, I need a level 293 male, a perfect male. So I guess I'm back to where I started. Near the end of day 72, I hatched a level 293 egg. Now I needed it to be male, but of course it's female. Well, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I can't start breeding yet, but when I do, I'll have two perfect females. So maybe I'll try to get a few mutations. 
you know, spice up the army with a few special colors. Who knows? And the next batch of eggs, another level 293 egg. And yet again, another woman. Okay, that's fine, I guess. I mean, it'd be nice to start breeding, but oh well. Now, I have three perfect female Rexes, and they all seem to have different colors. Which is interesting, but still doesn't really matter, because if I get mutations, there will hopefully be cooler, brighter colors, like bright red or blue or pink. Maybe not pink. Anyways, I still have to find that level 293 male, so I shall continue with this breeding montage. Near the end of day 76, I had finally gotten a perfect male. Now that that's over with, I still need to let him grow up. After that, I'll breed for a little longer to try and get one or two health or melee mutations. Then, I'll breed an army with those near a green obelisk. Sounds pretty simple, it's probably gonna take longer than I want it to, but that's pretty usual. Cool, now he's an adult. I got him into position with the three perfect females and well, Say it with me, let the breeding montage continue! On day 79, I hatched two mutated males. One was a very, very nice shade of blue, but unfortunately didn't have any mutations. So it probably had a movement speed mutation, which obviously doesn't exist, so in reality it's just a blue rex. I however like this shade, so I'm keeping him. I named him Culver's. The other baby rex had a melee mutation, which is great, but it's nearly day 80, so I decided to pick him up with numb nuts and quickly carry him to the green obelisk. This would be quicker than walking multiple rexes at once, so I had to at least try. But I didn't know how much time I had before he was too big and my bird just drops him. Luckily, I managed to make it all the way to the obelisk, so crisis averted. After I dropped off the juvenile rex, I flew back to grab perfect females to start breeding an army. So I grabbed Big Tooth and all three perfect females. Big Tooth honestly does some really good damage just because he's so leveled, so I'm honestly just gonna have him in my army. I also grabbed Numbnuts to follow Big Tooth as well. I'm glad I remembered that. Oh my, dude, you're so dumb. What are you doing? After I managed to lose all of my sanity, I mean, move all of these giant moronic lizards, I patiently waited for the melee mutated male to grow up. Then I started breeding the Rexes to start my army. I flew back home to make a feeding trough and some campfires to incubate the soon to come babies. So let the final breeding montage commence. Luckily it was so hot that I didn't even need campfires. Quite convenient. Okay, you know what I just said? I take that back. Now it's too hot. Bruh, I miss air conditioners and cryopods. And soul balls especially. Actually, more soul balls and cryopods. And now that I think of it, non-modded sucks. Y'all better like the video, for real. I also took this opportunity to pick up every egg and toss them closer to the arena center thing. Eventually, they went back to incubating, and they didn't die, so that's good. So I'll let you go back to enjoying the montage. The final montage. So now that they're all grown up, I realize that a lot of them weren't mutated, but at this point, I honestly don't really care. And they were all stuck in a blob, so now I'm just winging it. And all this has taught me, this whole experience, it's not about how good the game feels with no mods, I didn't learn how to be a better ARC player. The only thing I learned is that this game sucks without mods. So to all you players out there that cannot have access to mods, I am so sorry and I salute you. Cause this sucks. Anyways, now with my army fully grown and all that, they need saddles. So I went back home to craft some for them. When I went back, I brought Culver's with me, since he is imprinted and a cool looking Rex. Anyways, getting the saddles on the Rexes was kind of a pain, but I think I managed to get a saddle on each Rex, so that's good. Well, that's the end of the last montage. Now I need to get a Utyrannus and a Deodon. I'll do that later though, I also need to get each artifact. Me and Hannah will do that later. Or maybe I'll tame another smaller creature, because I might want to carry it with numb nuts, so maybe me and Hannah won't do that later. Anyways, my next objective is to get a Deodon so I can heal all of my Rexes. So on day 86, I ventured out to find myself a piggy. At the end of the day, I had snatched up a level 144 male Deodon. You better knock it off, young man. Don't make me turn this car around and spank you. And knocked him out. I don't really care much about the level, I just need a healer. When he tamed up, I named him Chris P. Bacon. Then I carried him home. On day 87, I arrived back at the Green Obelisk with Chris. I didn't have any meat to give and felt kind of stupid because not even five minutes ago, I dropped all the meat in Numb Nuts' inventory. Now I feel like a Numb Nuts. So I flew back home. I grabbed all the meat I could scavenge and even killed a pig with Hannah. I also grabbed the Ascendant Sabertooth saddle I got a long time ago. I was planning on taming a big kitty for the cave runs. And when I got back to the obelisk, I realized I had forgotten a saddle for Chris, so I had to fly back home yet again. Man, do I feel like a numbnuts. So, now I have a Deodon saddle. And now I'm back at the obelisk. 
So I gave Chris his saddle and flew to Carnot Island. Time to tame a cat. Cat with some long teeth, yes sir. Once I got to the island, I began searching. Let's hope this doesn't take too long. Near the end of day 88, I had finally found a level 180 saber tooth. Well, hello there. So I picked him up and quickly flew home. However, I didn't make it home. The saber tooth's damage was adding up on numbnuts, so I had to make an emergency landing. With that being said though, I bullied the kitty and knocked him out. He got just as bloody as Numbnuts did. On the morning of day 89, the big cat had tamed up. I had named him Titan because he'll be a Titan Slayer. Aha, <laughs> just kidding, no he won't, but we have to give him that confidence. Then I picked him up and flew to the Green Obelisk. When I got there, I took a few minutes to heal up Numbnuts. After he was healed, I went out to tame a Utyrannus. So I quickly ran home to see if I had any gates left over. Turns out I did because I didn't use them. Now to find a high level Utyrannus. On day 90, I didn't find a Utyrannus. No, I died because it got too cold for my poor baby character to handle. 22 degrees Fahrenheit is just so cold. What a baby. Anyways, I respawned and tried to get where I died. Of course it spawned me nowhere near where I had chosen to spawn, but uh, you know, that's whatever. I ended up dying to a saber tooth. Man, I love this game. So I respond at home this time and went to the green obelisk to take Titan to my corpse. I guess I can take this time to test Titan out as well. He's not too terrible. For a saber tooth, he's quite good, I'd say. Okay, so anyways, enjoy this montage. I'd say Live Me handles it pretty well. And by pretty well, I mean he dies a lot. Take it away, Live Me. And a you, Tyrannus? Okay. Okay, bro. Okay, bro. It's level 12. I'm gonna spawn here, but it's gonna spawn me way to the right. Wow. Man, look at that accuracy. Because that's so close to where I spawned, right? You got him, boys. Or I ain't gonna make it. This game sucks. Remember me, boys. And he's walking away. Okay, cool. I'm gonna die again. What is this game? Why is it so damn cold? Another Utyrannus. It's only 21 degrees. It's not that cold out. Oh, you scared me. Hi there. I spawned way closer this time. It's good. I'm gonna make it this time. Come on, Titan. We gotta go. Why did you not pick up? Stupid. I still don't even have my stuff. Oh, this game sucks. I hate this game. Wow, you just gonna do me like that, Titan? Arata came back with the full four suit. Four suit? I don't even know what that is. Fur suit? Yup, that's what it is. We ain't dying immediately now. But I went straight down the middle near the river because I thought it was safe and I haven't died yet, so that's good. But uh, I'm gonna knock on wood just to make sure I'm still safe. There we go. I should be good. Have not jinxed it yet. Day 90 is coming to a close, but I just need my stuff back so I can continue looking for a stupid Utah Rannis that I probably don't even need. Where are we looking at? Oh, you go. I, I gotta go down. I, I can't. He's gonna catch me. He's gonna nibble my toes. Help me. Help me. Please. Please help me. Help. Help me! I need your help! I need- Help me! <laughs> I had a- I had a heart attack, okay, man? That was the scariest thing I've ever done did seen. Ever. Oh, I'm freezing again. Why? I wasn't freezing over here. It's because it's cold out, isn't it? I hate this game! I hate it! It's not too cold over here. Actually, you know what? I'm staying here till daytime. This sucks. I waited till the morning of day 91 where hopefully it won't be freezing cold. It wasn't freezing anymore, so I went for my original corpse bag to grab my stuff. Let's go. Near the end of the day, I managed to arrive home. On day 92, I realized something. I'm at the wrong terminal. You see, this is the spider terminal, and in order to get my super cool railgun back, I need to kill the dragon, not the spider. So I'm going to have to move all of these giant lizards to the red obelisk. The obelisk on the complete opposite side of the island. This is going to suck. 
I didn't know how exactly to do it, whether I should take multiple trips or do it all at once. All at once would suck, but so would taking many trips. But I think multiple trips may be less sucky. Ugh, someone shoot me, because all of these idiots are basically stuck together. So instead, I'm going to move the breeding rexes and just hatch like 20 more eggs. That's my best option. It, it really is. So I grabbed Culver's, the male with a male in mutation, two perfect females, and Big Tooth. On day 93, I had finally made it to Red Obelisk. I'm going to include my three Rexes I'll use to make me more eggs for the next army since they have many levels I can put into melee. So since I'm going to include Big Tooth, Culver's, and all three of my breeder Rexes, I only need 14 Rex eggs. Halfway through the day, I got every egg I needed. Well, every egg plus two extras, just in case I guess. While I was breeding, it was too hot to incubate the eggs, but later in the day it had lowered to a very nice 91 degrees. Which is still very hot, mind you, but isn't too hot for these eggs anymore. Feels like 91 degrees in my room thanks to my PC, dang. Speaking of PCs, you should check out my three PCs at customluxpcs.com forward slash Raxerite, link in the description. Unfortunately, the temperature got too cold for the eggs, and by too cold I mean 89 degrees, cause apparently that's too cold. Anyways, instead of getting a bunch of campfires, I waited until day 94, where I placed every egg down in the arena circle thing, so when the eggs decide to hatch, I won't have to move them. Pretty genius, I'd say. And well, I'd say it was pretty successful. So I flew back to grab Titan and Crispy Bacon. On day 95, when I finished my trip bringing Chris, I went and imprinted as many Rexes as I could. Then I killed two unimprinted level 293 Rexes since I had two extra anyways. Now I have plenty of room for Mr. Bacon. Since all of the Rexes are grown up, I started to allow passive healing from my pig. Then I went and put saddles on every Rex. Then I waited for the Rexes to heal up. At the end of the day, they were all healed up. I also decided to go around and level up their melee. On day 96, I started my journey of collecting the artifacts that I need for the dragon boss fight. So I started with the artifact of the Sky Lord. In order to do this, however, I would need to run back home to make some grappling hooks. I also made a cooking station to make health brews. I also somehow managed to make red dye, even though I don't think it ran out of resources to continue making health brews. So I just used the dye to, well, dye my armor and my crossbow. Still don't know how I managed to make red dye, but oh well. I ended up making some more red dye, on accident of course. I still don't really know how I'm making it, but okay. So of course I dyed more items. I dyed my machete and it just made it look bloody. But don't worry YouTube, it's not blood, it's ketchup. I was cutting tomatoes earlier. Tomatoes filled with ketchup. While flying over to the Skylord cave on day 97, I decided to stop by a yellow drop. I got the blueprint for an Ascendant Chitin Helmet. It's not super expensive, so maybe I'll craft it later. Early in the morning, I had arrived at the cave, so I decided to go in. It's pretty simple, just go to the right. If there's a fork in the road, or in this case tunnels, go right. I placed down a sleeping bag just in case. After I finally managed to get the Skylord artifact after a pretty annoying experience with bats and a lot of spiders, I set up a few campfires because I was hungry. On day 98, I decided to take my chances with the strong cave. There's going to be a lot of very strong creatures in here, but I'm just going to have to run past them. My plan was to just try and avoid everything, but we'll see what happens. I also left some of my stuff in Numbnuts' inventory, and I immediately ran into a problem. You see, this cave has a, a very small entrance, meaning Titan doesn't fit. This is not good. And now that I'm also realizing it, Primitive Plus doesn't make scuba tanks or gas masks, so I can't do the artifact of the cunning cave or the immune. I decided to talk to the art gods about this, and they understood my problem. They told me to get Artifact of the Hunter, Clever, Massive, and that I also need to sacrifice three dinos. So let's do exactly that. My first artifact on the list is Artifact of the Clever. When I got there, I had to fight off like 20 Dilophosaurs, but I proceeded to enter the cave. Luckily, since Titan's saddle is really good, the creepy crawlies in the cave barely did any damage. But I did manage to get the artifact, so on to the next location, the Hunter Cave. The easiest cave, really. I barely even broke a sweat doing this cave. On day 99, I flew on over to the last and final cave, the Massive Cave, or more commonly referred to as the Lava Cave. It was pretty easy. I was, of course, very nervous about missing a jump, but luckily I managed to make them all. Titan's saddle is still proving to be very effective, so that's good. I knew it'd come in handy, glad I got it, like, 
uh, I don't know, 70 some days ago. I also looted a yellow drop on the way out and got an ascendant flintlock pistol. So when I got home, I made some bullets for it. The flintlock pistol is uh, all right. It's just a pistol that has one bullet that you have to reload like after every shot. So it's like a mini musket. It does decent damage, but it's really not easy to aim. Unfortunately, the musket and the flintlock pistols models are trash and are basically broken. Both of them aren't easy to aim, but the flintlock's definitely worse than the musket when it comes to aiming. Anyways, with that out of the way, I got to bring these three artifacts to the Ark Gods with three tames. Then, they will give me the artifacts I can't get. I think the Ark Gods want me to get my railgun back, so that's pretty cool. So I gathered everything, I put the artifacts in a box, and surrounded it with my sacrifices. I decided to sacrifice my two biggest tames here, and my third biggest and favorite feathered dino. I turned away from the sacrifices and the crate, and then lightning and thunder started to flash behind me. It was very violent. I turned back towards the crate and my sacrifices were dead. But on the bright side, I now have the artifacts I need to fight the dragon. On day 100, we fought the boss. I actually fought the dragon three times. You'll understand why. Well then, it is that time of day, and by time of day, I mean that time of the video where we fight the boss. Now what we have to do is kill this ugly thing, in fact honestly he's actually quite not ugly, he's quite good looking I'ma be honest. Anyways my point is we gotta kill him because he took my railgun away and I want that back now. So I've spent enough time in this primitive wasteland, it's time to kill a dragon. Alright we got every single artifact that we need, let's do this. Actually you know what, I'm gonna do Culver's because Culver's needs my imprint boost in order to like be boosted, you, you know what I'm saying. Big Tooth does not need that, so I think this is the better option. Go get the dragon, boys. Go get him. Go get him, boys. You guys are stuck, aren't you? So, problem. Oh wait, I'm gonna die. Bro, what? Well, uh, I'm kind of stupid. So I'm back, but uh, every everything's dead. So, uh. I really hate to do this, but it is out of my own stupidity here. Hirochi is going to be helping us out. Now, obviously, Hirochi ain't as powerful as she normally can be. All right, come here, big boy. There we go. Hey, look. I got my railgun back. Let's go. I knew you guys probably weren't going to like that ending, so I went and bred some more eggs and hatched them all up again, and well, I'm sure as you can see, I think we're ready to fight the boss just one more time. This time, I'm not going to forget to drink my brews, and uh, this time I'm just gonna not die, simply put. And the reason I'm not going to burn to death this time is because I actually have a ghillie suit. So, uh, that's gonna be pretty cool. And besides all of these guys that are pretty cool, I have Alpha right here. He is the only one that has melee mutations and, well, he's red. So I've killed a lot of stuff with him, got some explorer notes, and he's basically big tooth level of strong. So he's not super strong, but he's not weak. So let's, uh, spawn the dragon, and this time, let's fight it. Also, it looks like Chris is not going to be in the battle. Well, uh, there you go, buddy. Okay, so we're over here. We are good. Try not to fall off the edge here. That's what's up. Get him. Yes, don't push me in. Don't push me in. Kill him without killing me. You got that? That's what's up. That's what's up. This is how it was supposed to go. I need to get in there and help. Alpha will be delivering them good hits. Oh, he got out of there. Hey, look, he's not bacon right now. Cool. Oh, he's going to turn into bacon now. Okay. Oh, that's not good. Come on, guys. Hey, bacon, you need to start doing your healings, bro. He ain't be doing his healings. Ouch. Get him, boys. Come on. Yo, Chris, why ain't you healing nobody? Get him, boys. No! Don't poop right now. This is a very crucial time for you to not poop. Oh, this ain't gonna work. This is the last punch. Oh, that hurt. Oh, that really hurts. That's crazy.
Well, I suppose 100 days is not enough time for Primitive Plus. We still need a good ending. So I spent another 15, 16, I don't know, some days, okay? To breed a whole new army. This time I took my time. I tried to get the mutations I needed. And most importantly, I imprinted and made sure that every Rex had the same mutations as the others. Now, they don't all look the same, but most of them... I don't know. It's, it's either green or white. Let me show you. So what we've got over here is a bunch of green and white Rexes. Green is like about the only color that actually came out after the breeding session. And that's completely fine. They look fine to me. Also, the green is a very nice color. And then I'm sure you notice the bright orange one right in front of your eyes at the bottom of the screen. That one is Charizard. I, I know it's, it's kind of funny, but he's he's orange. He's got a yellow belly. It's it's a pretty good coincidence and uh, I'm, I'm glad to have him. He's not really any different than the others, but he he's cool. He's cool. So I've got 20 Rexes here. They've got they've got about five mutations or so. Uh, nothing too special, but they are a little bit more mutated than the last ones. And like I said, they're all imprinted because I worked on that with the cryopods and all that just to make sure that all of them could do it. I did like one at a time. I, I did a lot of things and it was honestly, it was really painful, really stressful, really time consuming. And if you're really this far into the video and you're not subscribed, that really hurts my feelings. So uh, please subscribe. Anyways, without further ado, I've got 20 Rexes, no Daedons, no UDs. I didn't feel like doing any of that. It was just all Rexes here. I've got all the artifacts we need. I don't have any single items in my inventory besides a ghillie suit, just because why not? Speaking of day, it is day 118. All right, let's do this. Get him, get the guy, get him. Yes, go get him, boys. Or don't, that's fine. We can, we can just sit over here. Come over here, boys. Oh yeah, okay, we got Charizard first. Nice. Okay, boys, this is good. This is good stuff. Okay, so uh, don't die. Got you on neutral. They got health as well this time. Get him, boys. You can step through the lava. It don't hurt that much. Get him. Oh yeah. Come on, boys. Don't let him escape this time. Oh yeah, we got this. See, this is what we call effort pays off. You, you waste your time, but you don't actually waste your time. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Don't quote me on that, okay? But basically, these Rexes are purebred, and this guy hates me and wants me on fire. Nice. Anyways, these guys are purebreds. Oh, we lost one. Never mind. We won, boys. We won, boys. Oh, yeah. That's what's up. You guys, this is your good ending. Well guys, you made it to the end of the video and you have seen the good ending. So if you liked the video, go ahead and smash that like button. And if you are not already subscribed, go ahead and do so. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.